Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, first of all, could I see a show of hands of if you are a member of one of these organizations? Oh. Okay. I was, uh, so it, a little bit we're going to be tre preaching to the choir here. But um, <laughs> what uh, uh, I wanted to do briefly, which is several people have asked about this, is like, you know, how did all this come about? And in, in doing that, and, wh and why was Chicago the first one? Well, we here in Chicago have a, a real history of sculptors socializing with one another. And this started way back 20-some uh, years ago when uh, uh, Richard Hunt and Barry Tinsley started the uh, May Mayor Byrne Mile of Sculpture, which was uh, later ended when Mayor Byrne no longer was in office. And Later then, another resurrection came about in the mid-90s that was Pier Walk, and Terry Karpowitz uh, was one of the uh, founders of that, and uh, later, as the exhibit moved on, I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, the executive director of it. <clears throat> uh, briefly, that show uh, that was started by sculptors and run by sculptors was designed to showcase Chicago sculpture in an international setting. So it was uh, essentially a local show that we invited the entire world to participate in. And uh, as that, uh, um, essentially, when there were no longer any sculptors on the board, and it was sort of populated by uh, stockbrokers and uh, lawyers, the show sort of lost a little bit of its heart. It also lost. Um, almost all of the Chicago sculptors. Um, and there was a huge void for a couple of years, and this was, would be around uh, 2001. Um, and that void was that we liked getting together and helping each other and moving sculpture around and talking about sculpture and just socializing. And that idea grew out of some uh, traveling that uh, Barry and I did. Uh, after the uh, demise of that show, we started entering other shows. Um, uh, one, one show in particular, it was Barry, uh, Terry Karpwitz, and myself that was out in, in Seattle. And you know, of course, it was a long journey out there, so we had a lot of time to talk. And we thought, we should start another group. And what should it be, and what are the parameters? Well. One of the, the, this is really essentially the, the quick version of it, is that in order to sort of have a collective bargaining and to get instant credibility, we thought, well, we should approach the ISC about being a chapter of the ISC. There were no chapters at that point, so it was a, uh, a process of writing proposals. Um, Barry and I went to New York at that particular year, which would have been 2003, I believe, the spring of, no, 2000, yeah, 2003, I think. Um, they, uh, we went to the Whitney Museum and presented our idea to the, to the ISC board. And it was, uh, it was good that Barry Tinsley was along with me because most people didn't know who I was, but everybody knew who Barry was. And of those of you that have had the pleasure of meeting him, you'll know why. Um, anyway, we walked in, made our presentation, and one of the questions was, well, what are you looking to benefit from the ISC doing this? And Barry just asked the question back, no, it's not what we're going to get. It's what you, the ISC, are going to get of having local chapters. And then he went on to explain that. And essentially, the ISC a long time had decided long time ago had decided that they were not going to be in the exhibit business, uh, mainly because when you have a membership of 7,000 people, how do you decide who's going to be in an exhibit of, you know, 20, 30 people? So other than the student exhibit, they are not in the exhibit. So uh, one of the things that we as chapters are charged with are doing exhibits for ISC members. Uh, the only caveat for us is that all of our members must be ISC members also, which is a pretty simple thing actually, because who wouldn't be? Um, 
So the, the CSI formed <clears throat> in uh, 2004, and we, um, we had this, I just put this up real quick. You can, I'll let you read it real quickly. And these are the, the current officers of the ISC. Uh, this is a, uh, the, the what, do, what do they call it? The, it's the last page in the magazine. Um, so in uh, the summer of 2004, uh, Barry and I, uh, with the help of Terry Karpowitz and a few other uh, sculptors, uh, organized an event at uh, a fellow sculptor's uh, studio and gallery and we were expecting maybe 40 or 50 people to show up and just see if they were interested in having an organization to do this kind of thing. Um, well, it was a really hot summer day. It was easily inside of this building. It was 95 degrees because there was no air conditioning. And there were over 120-some people, sculptors that showed up, and they, they were <coughs> thirsty for an organization. So uh, with that, um, and, and uh, Robert Duncan, who was the chair of the ISC at the time, uh, and uh, you can't probably, t I don't know if, do I have a bigger picture? Oh, no, I don't. Um, anyway, that, that's sort of the core group there. Uh, Robert Duncan and Mary Catherine Johnson, who was the uh, acting director at the time, uh, came and made a presentation. And uh, so that, <clears throat> that was in the summer of 2004. Um, one of the, the primary things that, we, well, we do a number of things. Uh, first, we, you know, there's certainly an educational component that we would like the, the artists, the sculptors, old and new, or experienced and inexperienced, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, that there can be a dialogue of somebody that has a material problem or a gallery problem or an insurance problem that we can share those things. So we have about four general meetings a year, and in those general meetings, we invite a special guest. <clears throat> Some of the people in the past, excuse me, <clears throat> have been um, people like Carolyn Sachet, who is the head of the GSA program for the Great Lakes region, which is housed here in, in Chicago, on how do you get a GSA commission? Uh, we've had insurance agents come and talk about what kind of insurance needs you need. We've had um, curators come. Um, when uh, Paul Klein was curating the expansion for the McCormick Place, he came and basically extended the um, uh, deadline for everybody that was there that night uh, and explained what he was looking for and how he was going about curating it. So there really were helpful insights into how these other parts of our business operate. Um, so, and in some of the times during these general meetings, we, would, we did something that we called uh, slide night, which we've changed to image night since we don't really use slides anymore. And we let every uh, member have 30 seconds and three images to show. And that was very successful. And one of the, um, there was, we always would invite curators and collectors to, if they would like to come and see this. And it was a really a, a quick way to see, uh, you know, 80 artists work in a very short period of time. <clears throat> so these are a series of some catalogs of some exhibits that we have uh, organized. Um, one of them that you said, the orange one there that says CSI Biennale. There happened to be a gallery uh, owner at uh, one of those slide nights, and uh, she created uh, a um, uh, bi biannual exhibit of Chicago sculpture. Uh, unfortunately, her gallery went out of business, so, so did the, the Biennale. But it was just an example of the power of having somebody just come to be in her, essentially be informed, and came up with their own idea that was um, very successful, and this gallery actually had several solo shows from our members um, that came out of that. Uh, our philosophy with uh, shows is that we don't produce the show. We expect the host organization to produce it, so we don't raise money for the exhibit or anything like that. 
Uh, in some cases, we self-publish a, a catalog, and when we do that, the artists that are in the show uh, help fund the catalog, um, mainly because we don't feel that it's fair for other members to be publishing catalogs for a show that they're not in. Um, this is a picture from last year. Uh, we did a show when the uh, Art Chicago was around the Merchandise Mart. Uh, we did that two years in a row that we called Avenue of Sculpture. So in addition to finding uh, host organizations, we do also find venues for outdoor work. It's much easier to find a venue for outdoor work than it is for indoor work because indoor work generally has to be in a gallery or a museum and as you all know those are usually booked out uh, far into the future. Though we have been successful with that, uh, for example, things like the Krasel Art Center in Michigan, um, Oakton uh, Community College at the um, Caroline Museum, they've done two uh, shows of our work. Uh, this was uh, one of our, during one of our general meetings <clears throat> at the uh, Garfield Conservatory, uh, one of our members, um, Vivian Visser, who is kind of right in the center there, um, she uh, worked for the Park District and came up with this idea of having a show in the conservatory that she called a Forum and Fauna. And um, so we had our general meeting there in the conservatory. and. Uh, some of you may have had the um, uh, pleasure of uh, seeing the opening of that last night. Uh, uh, Garfield Conservatory is closed right now for renovation, and so we did it in the Lincoln Conservatory. Um, uh, again, here's a picture of how involved we all get to uh, the uh, you can see all of the guys laying on the ground there and everybody pulling on a crowbar. And the artist is then there behind there, Ruth, directing the whole operation. As another general meeting, um, we, um, in addition to the general meetings, we have been doing what we call open studios. And they all, they usually are on the, the months that we don't have a general meeting. And it is hosted by an individual artist, or in some cases uh, where there are studios where there's a group of artists that all sort of share a space. And when that happens, it is their night. So uh, no one is to bring any of their own information or any images or talk about their own work. It is all about that person that is hosting it. Uh, and we usually all, you know, do a potluck. We bring, you know, our beverages and, and food and, um, and then have a critique, which is unique to some of us that have been out of uh, learning institutions for a long time. Uh, here's a couple of uh, sculptors, Sharon and Jason, uh, working on the former Foral and Flana show. Uh, one of the things that we, um, we've done for two years now is we've done a show that we call Six to the Power of Three. And it started at Art Chicago and then moved to uh, the Chicago Expo this year. And what it is is that every member has the opportunity to submit three uh, sculptures that have to fit within the dimensions of six inches by six inches by six inches. Um, we then display the, the first of their three. If it sells, then the next one gets pulled out of storage. And uh, this is a really, it's, it's A, a very interesting exercise to work in that scale. And B, it's also a, um, a very affordable uh, price point. I think the most expensive sculpture this past year was around 1800 uh, There were some as low as, you know, under $100. So, uh, it really offers people that go to these art fairs, uh, you know, they can literally, it's um, cash and carry. Um, these are a couple of uh, young ladies that we hired to do the sales for us um, because we felt it was not, we should not have any members there so that it's not, uh, they're not biased in any way. And they, they both had gallery experience and are good salespeople. So, um, 
they uh, they do they have done very well for us. Uh, this is this is from a couple of weeks ago, and I think this uh, may be my last slide. It's um, just I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, this was outside of the uh, Mart uh, doing some touch-up work on a piece by uh, John Suave who does not live in Chicago. He lives in Detroit, which is one of the other things that I wanted to point out is that when one of the reasons we called ourselves Chicago Sculpture International was that we wanted to invite everybody, no matter what region of the world they lived in, to be a member. Um, we felt that if they uh, were an ISC member and they wanted to send us the membership fee and they lived in um, Birmingham, England, they're all more than welcome to be a member. Uh, they may not make it to all of the meetings, but they certainly have submitted work to the exhibits. And we've had, uh, um, we, in fact, we have probably, I think, uh, about seven artists from the New York area and uh, I think about three or four uh, international artists. Um, so um, anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much what, what we at the CSI do. Hello, I'm Isaac Duncan III. I'm the president for MSA. MSA stands for Mid-South Sculpture Alliance. We are a regional group that um, comprise of members or regions of, uh, or states should I say, of Alabama, Kentucky, Georgia, and Tennessee. We're, our home base right now is in Chattanooga because that's where it actually, the whole concept of creating a group for the regions started. Historically, it started with uh, pretty much two people having a discussion. One, Verena Baxter, our previous president, uh, a sculptor in uh, Flintstone, uh, Flintstone, Georgia, uh, who frequently uh, showed in Chattanooga and John Henry, uh, who was also on the board of the ISC. And it was interesting because it, from that conversation, from a, a conversation of how can sculptors in that area get together and uh, create exhibition opportunities, have conversations, meaningful dialogue, uh, from that conversation birthed the MSA. <coughs> and what was interesting was that at, also during that time, I believe the ISC was having other discussions about you know affili other affiliate chapters, CSI, uh, which I call Big Brother, um, w w already created and they were going strong. And I, being a, uh, being a sculptor and traveled to Chicago a couple of times, was actually an, a member um, at one point of CSI, which I need to do my renewal by the end of today. Um, and I was aware of that along with other sculptors. So what happened? Well, Verena and John got together and say, let's go ahead and see if there's a, a group that can form. We thought, or they thought at the time, okay, Chattanooga's just not gonna be the only place that can, that can house something like this, especially if we're gonna also approach the ISC about becoming a chapter group. And they put a call out over at John's studio for artists within, uh, sculptors specifically, within a 120 mile radius. And from that call, we received a group of people that came into the studio and we had a frank dialogue. You know, who's interested? What are possibilities? What are things that we want? From there, um, Verena and John uh, put a proposal together and had dialogue with the ISC and also knew about CSI. I believe probably contacted you or someone in the group about how they started. And paperwork started to happen. One of the things that we did off the back was start filing for our 501c3 status, uh, which is important because we knew strategically if we're going to ask for funding, we're going to need to, we're going to, need to have that status. While we were in the process, though, we operated under the ISC's 501c3 status, um, which was a great option because that really helped out. After all, all that went, we were formed and uh, we started doing memberships and uh, getting the word out. Like CS, CSI, uh, we also promote exhibition opportunities. We open up our membership to anyone. It doesn't matter where you're at. 
we look at it as this is the these are the areas that we work in. We promote our shows. We give information about shows in this area, and use us coming to our family so you can market your work in our these territories that we have uh, um, nominated as as for the group. So what do we do? Let's go through the slides real quick. Okay, juried exhib um, exhibitions, which we because we have 501c status, we can tap into local uh, businesses. We can also tap into foundations and uh, give artist stipends. Uh, 18 month exhibits, and we also do catalogs, but the catalogs are through um, online. So again, same thought. We're not gonna produce the catalogs. We're gonna take images, we're gonna get it out. Uh, we're gonna collect images from you. We're gonna put it, I believe it's on um, Luhu and I believe it's Luhu that uh, does the catalogs, and you can go to this site and download it, order as many as you want, okay? So examples of works um, in, actually in uh, Tennessee, in Chattanooga, along the uh, Tennessee River. With exhibitions, uh, because we have, there are many affiliate groups, we partnered, so one year for one of our exhibition, we partnered with members of CSI. So it was members of CSI and members of MSA. Indoor ex exhibitions, again, jurid, um, awards, and also catalogs. We partner with galleries to show works. Student exhibitions, again, jury exhibitions, awards, catalogs. We partner with universities and university art departments to show student work in their facilities. Studio visits at our conferences. So we have open studio during the conferences. You can talk to, uh, find out you know, what somebody's doing, what materials they use. Conference workshops. It's interesting, uh, the young gentleman on the right uh, with the plaid shirt and right next to him with the gray hair, um, the one on the right is John McLeod, a, a local sculptor. And they were, um, Steve Morgan, who's next to him, who owns a, a welding fabrication company, um, did a demonstration on welding. And actually John McLeod now works for um, Steve. So making that connection, because he, he's, he's a stone carver and wood carver, and he was getting into metal, and he wanted to know where can I get the skills? Well, through our exhibition, through our shows, through our workshops, he came across Steve, and now he has, he's employed by Steve, and transferring that knowledge and skill that he didn't have at one time into making his artwork. But also now he understands what it is to make railing and stuff like that. So if he needs to open up a shop to make money, to survive, and to also make more art, he can do that. Whoops. Sorry about that. Um, again, workshop. This is a patina workshop. Uh, one of our um, local vendors and member. We, open, we also open up our membership to uh, gallery owners, educators, and uh, local vendors. So there's a partnership and we also promote them at our conferences. So this is a Steve Townsend from Townsend Atelier who's going over patina workshop. Uh, there's a group that has a sculpture park which is Sculpture Trails in Indiana. They came up and did an aluminum scratch block pour just for the conference. Panel discussions. Um, we'll, we'll invite Architects, we'll invite urban designers, we'll invite other artists uh, to sit on panels for various topics. This one was from our last uh, symposium. And we, we dealt with how to use digital technology as a tool uh, for that conference. Not as the end product, but as a tool that you can use to promote. So when you're doing RFPs or when you're um, going to a meeting, there's apps that are out there that you can load up on your phone or your tablet and you can have a digital re rendering of your piece and you can put it in spot of that area just like you would with photo uh, Photoshop or like previously taking one picture, cutting it out and pasting on another piece of paper. 
networking opportunities, of course, uh, sculptor, sculptor with sculptor relationship, student with sculptor, student with educator relationship. Here is, uh, again, sculptors with uh, other sculptors. We have jurors and keynote speakers. Uh, Robert Stackhouse and Carol Mickett. And we, we, all, we have um, directors from institutions, other practicing artists that are not local. Um, they can, we have artists that come from all over when we invite them. And one of the interesting things that we do is because we're a member of the ISC, we can tap into the uh, members that are professional artists that are out there in museums and ask the ISC, okay, we're gonna have this conference. We would like to have such and such. Is there a way to contact them? Can you be the mediator? Can you at least do the introduction and then let us take it forward? Um, again, we have now a smaller conference, um, actually uh, is a small conference, and we call it CONFAB, where we get well-known sculptors to come in and talk and just have a chit-chat discussion, just like we're here together. Uh, our first one was last year, and we had Jesus Morales, and we had James Searles. And as you, as you can see, conversation. James is sitting down in the front, just getting real with everybody, talking about galleries, his experience, his thought of what's the state of the arts, and of course, social. So because we have a partnership with area um, institutions like the museum, this is the Hunter Museum, we uh, do socials there. This is at John Henry Studio. Of course, does a bar have to be involved? And you know, again, partnerships. We operate and we partner with city governments, county governments, foundations, art galleries, institutions, private donors, other art organizations, and the business sector. And we, we see it as promotion for what we do as sculptors. I mean, reality is, if we don't do it, no one else is gonna do it for us. And if they do it for us, it's gonna be on their terms. So that's one reason why you wanna get together as a group, create your own terms, and promote yourself, okay? So Texas is the new kid on the block. We had first um, Chicago, then we had Mid-South, and then, then we popped along. We have this gigantic state. So when these guys talk about these little states, they'd all fit inside Texas. So one of our problems is communicating within our own state. But to go backwards in time a little bit, um, this idea sprang out from academic symposia. And um, one of the people that was involved was James Searles, who you just saw on a slide a minute ago. Uh, who followed Charles Pebworth from Huntsworth, from Huntsville, and brought uh, the first symposium to Lawndale and X University of Houston about in the late 70s. And this continued year after year, different academic institutions in different locations within the state would host these symposia. Um, they were really oriented towards students. We did workshops, we did, uh, we brought in, we did all the kind of things that you talk, we talked about right here, brought in guest speakers and so on and so forth, but we had mentoring sessions that had to do with curricula structure. We had uh, talks about what to do when you graduate and so on and so forth, how to become a professional, blah, blah, blah. The question eventually came up um, about, well, okay, now what do you do when you graduate? What happens after that? Um, some years ago, 2009, a group of us were at one of these symposium, a small little tiny group, and just decided that this was enough. The schools were getting a little um, glommy. They wanted the symposium to stay at their school year after year because they were getting all this attention. And built into that, of course, is a certain hyperboil or a certain perhaps prejudice about what they wanted to do, and it was beginning to feel constrictive. So we decided that what we needed within the state of Texas was an organization that was not academically grounded, did not happen on campuses, did not do workshops, did not do the kind of symposia lectures that one might ordinarily expect, but instead networked and serviced people who were now out in the field as trying to be professionals or already professionals. So, so we started this group. And 
that would be, we started this discussion in 2009. It took about a year to get slightly organized, and then we developed a, a system. Like, okay, now how do, we build, how do you make a structure? So also different than these guys, to a certain extent, we decided, well, we really wanted to have the best that we could possibly get. So we set up an honorary little group with three really well-known sculptors, and then the board itself began to talk about who else should be on the board, and we did not look at academic uh, resumes. We looked at what have they been doing professionally, and we vetted people to come on the board who were, in fact, pretty well established professionally. Then at the secondary um, committee underneath the board, but advising the board, then we set up a, a steering committee. The steering committee was also vetted. By that, by that I mean we went, to, we went to the web, we looked at their work, we talked to them, and so on and so forth, and they are now just, because we're new, beginning to serve their role as sort of an adjunct um, worker bee and advisory committee to the board. Um, then, then as time went on, other people got word of this and wanted to join up. So we developed a general membership. And general membership, we have some, but hope to have more, collectors, gallery owners, art writers, curators, and other sculptors who are either just now emerging or who have been in the field a while, but we want to have them kind of like get used to the organization, and then if they seem to be active and everybody likes everybody, then we can move them over to the steering committee. Um, so it's, it's organized a little differently than, than the other ones we've got. You can see here that we've got board member tasks. Our board is now uh, 13 members, and each member has a different job. And this makes it a whole lot easier from the director's point of view, because I can say, OK, let's do this, and I can get a hold of somebody over here that does that, and we could begin to activate whatever that is. It's been working pretty well. <clears throat> so far, we've done these curated shows. Um, and by curated, I mean we borrow, beg, or hire a curator that um, has the kind of credentials that we're kind of looking for, um, or who might be able to voluntarily work for us without pay, because we don't have any tax status yet. We depend entirely on our membership fees, part of which, of course, go to the ISC, but the other part we use to sort of manage the system. Um, so these are the shows we've had so far. And you can see that now that the chapters are starting to interact with each other, the chapters are now communicating with each other and saying, OK, we're going to have this show like Chicago Sculpture Exhibit or the Big Outdoor Show or the, Flana, the Flora and Flana Show, Fauna, Fauna, Fauna. And um, <laughs> they invited the, our group. So we put out a call on our website, which was one of the very first things we set up, was a website and then a face, an active Facebook system. And our members could then enter these exhibits and possibly get in. So we, we're now at 70 members. And one of the things that, as director, that I'm pretty concerned with now is, what do we do with those folks that haven't been curated into a show? And so once we get our not-for-profit status, I'm hoping very much to find a very big indoor space and do what these folks are already doing, which is have full membership shows. And I think that's a, a way to sort of activate the rest of the membership who's now kind of idle. Um, but we uh, have met in artist studios, we've met in galleries, we have social, social events, and um, people, people really network. Um, this is one of our early meetings, and you can see that this is, this is mostly bored, but the person with the white shirt on, the tunic to your front of the slide, is Johanna from the ISC who came to visit us and talk about the relationship between the ISC and the TSG. Another meeting, another year or so later, happened at an artist studio in Houston on a place called Itchy Acres. And they're all looking at a photographer. <laughs> a photographer's up on a balcony taking their picture, and somebody else took this picture. I thought it was really funny. But um, this is a, a place where five sculptors have bought several acres, and they all live there. So we were able to go in five different studios and see all that work and talk to each of those artists, whether they were members or not. It so happens that of the five three-year members. We had a show in Houston at a commercial gallery called G Gallery. It's just sort of a fisheye view through the front window. And as I said, these shows, have been, all the shows so far have been curated. 
So just some kind of what happens inside the shows kind of activity. And <clears throat> one of our board members has been able to um, secure for us an annual venue at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. And consequently, every year we'll be able to show um, through, cura through a curatorial process members at this botanical garden. Um, it's, this one, this sculpture is that thing that comes up out, out of the flowers. It's not, I mean, it's like very integral to the space. So sometimes people look at this and go, well, where's this art, you know? Okay, so, and then um, very recently um, at Blue Star Contemporary Art in San Antonio, we were able to participate in a symposium that Bill Fitzgibbons, the director there, put together. And we had a show for members that was curated by Bill King. And so this is a shot inside the, that particular exhibit, which also was uh, connected to the symposium. So all the people that came to the symposium, and I think there were 150 or so, um, were able to walk through the show and talk to the artists and see people's work. <laughs> okay, so there's our contact information.